What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode of TLDR, your weekly recap for good news in the tech and finance space. Our first story this week is all about CES, the consumer electronics show, where all these tech nerds go to Las Vegas to meet with the world's leading tech companies and explore their futuristic products. Yes, I'm definitely jealous I didn't get to go this year. Anyway, the first story from CES that I thought was important was Toyota unveils the e-palette. Thanks to Geoff, a subscriber and Patreon supporter, for sending me an email about this. This is a crazy, futuristic, battery-powered, autonomous mobility concept with a million different use cases. Toyota is planning to use this for parcel delivery, packages, logistics, ride sharing, think autonomous Uber competitor, e-commerce if you want to have a pop-up store, food delivery, or even a mini hotel where you can sleep in. Initial partners on this platform who are going to be planning apps and content are Amazon, Didi, Mazda, Pizza Hut, and Uber. So some heavy hitters are already teaming up with Toyota on this concept, but here's the kicker. They will be feasibility testing this product on the roads in the U.S. in the early 2020s. Now, does anyone else feel like this was eerily similar to something that we saw in Elon Musk's Boring Company video? I do. And this was a vehicle that many people thought was Tesla's Model B or electric minibus. Tesla was super quiet about what that was. They haven't said anything about it. But now, six months or a year later, Toyota comes out with a vehicle concept that looks almost exactly the same. Are they copying Tesla? You tell me. I think if anybody's going to pull this autonomous, battery-powered mobility platform off, it will be Tesla, not Toyota. But anyway, really cool to see Toyota making moves on this. Another thing I thought was crazy was the companion robot buddy. Step aside, Alexa. This guy is even more interactive and cool and he's got eyes and a tablet for a face he's from a company called blue frog robotics he has a wide range of features because of that tablet ipad interface he can help you facetime different relatives your grandparents he can even stand guard in your home and alert you if burglars come he can also be used for interactive education like teaching your kids math they're also opening up an app store where you can code all different sorts of use cases that buddy can do they have no word on when this will launch yet but the pricing is supposed to be around $1,500 per robot. I mean, I guess the future robots are here. This is what they're going to look like. A lot friendlier than I was expecting. The next thing, the Volocopter VC200 prototype. Now, this was part of Intel's keynote where they flew this autonomous drone. I guess this is what the future of flying cars are going to look like. Volocopter is made by a 50-person startup. They're working with Intel on this, who has been working with them for quite some time, but didn't announce the partnership formally until this presentation. Volocopter Volocopter is a pretty cool startup themselves. They just raised $30 million from Daimler, the company that owns Mercedes-Benz. They also have a partnership with the Transit Authority of Dubai to work on flying taxis there. Volocopter thinks they're going to be able to launch a commercial pilot program with these flying autonomous drones somewhere in the early 2020s. Facebook wants to get a billion people into virtual reality. This was a goal they announced in October when they veiled the Oculus Go. Then Hugo Barra, who is apparently, according to Recode, the de facto CEO of Oculus, uh, gave a talk at CES, and he said that they are launching in partnerships with Xiaomi, which is the Chinese smartphone maker, a headset for the, exclusively for the Chinese market. The interesting side here is that Xiaomi will actually be making the software for the headset. The biggest news with this is not really that Facebook's partnering with Xiaomi, but that this could be their entrance to the Chinese market. Facebook is blocked in China with the Great Firewall. You're not allowed to access many of the U.S.'s most popular social networks, and I'm guessing that's why Facebook had to let Xiaomi do the software for the headset because they need to have control and allow a Chinese company to do it. But this could be really exciting long-term for Facebook because it's a toe into the Chinese market. Now, this would just kind of crack me up straight out of a Silicon Valley episode, the Kohler Numi Smart Toilet. They call it a new standard of excellence in the bathroom. They put out like this super chic, looks like a perfume or lingerie ad, but no, it's for a toilet. It was cracking up the whole time I was reading about this. It comes with a touchscreen remote that controls all the features, including a heated seat, water efficient flush, music, and you can control the water temperature, pressure, and spray via the integrated smart bidet. I mean, I don't know anybody that would waste money on this. These are the kind of things that are at the Consumer Electronics Show, so damn, I gotta get there next year, I guess. Crypto news. There has been a big correction in the crypto asset world. This is probably a healthy thing. I mean, most of these assets are still up like 50 or 100 times from a year ago, but they did have a strong pullback the past week or so. Bitcoin, as I do this episode, is around 11,500, down from a high of 19,000 just a month ago. Ethereum's at 1,030, down from a high of 1,400 a week ago. But it's moved up to the number two most valuable crypto because Ripple, which had overtaken Ethereum briefly, is now back down to 150. 
54 from a high of $3.50 in early January. Another really interesting piece of crypto news, a little bit old, but I thought it was worth covering. Peter Thiel, apparently bought into Bitcoin heavily in 2017 with about 15 to $20 million of his capital from his founder's fund, which is his VC fund that he runs. This is a report from the Wall Street Journal. And what's really fascinating here is in a 2014 Reddit AMA, Ask Me Anything, Peter Thiel acknowledges that the overall long-term vision of PayPal, which was to create a new world currency, was never realized. You know, they pivoted into this payment, e-commerce, eBay partner thing, which is great. PayPal's a massive business. So I think it's crazy that now he's getting into Bitcoin, which seems the closest thing to realizing PayPal's original vision. This is why I'm also so fascinated to know what is Elon Musk thinking about Ethereum, Bitcoin, and all that stuff. He stayed totally quiet, but given his original involvement in PayPal and original vision to disrupt the banking system with Thiel, I am just super curious where Elon Musk stands on this. Also really fascinating to note that Peter Thiel, or Peter Thiel, was the original funding source for Ethereum and Vitalik Buterin's project. Last piece of great news this week, Apple is coming home. They have announced a plan to repatriate potentially hundreds of billions of dollars of cash, pay a $38 billion tax bill. They're gonna invest $30 billion in the next five years in capital investments in the US. This is gonna be hiring new people. They're gonna be building out more data centers. This is gonna create 20,000 jobs in the US. I don't know, this is just great news for the local economy. This is thanks to the new tax plan, which lowered the rate at which money could be repatriated to 15 and a half percent or something like that. And so that was the catalyst for Apple doing this. They're the first big company to announce a move like this since the new law went into place. But I wouldn't be surprised to see a bunch more companies announce similar similar initiatives with this new legislation. In the hyperchange universe, yes, I've been sloughing a little. I didn't put out videos for a whole week. I tweeted out I was working on a top secret project. This is it. I wrote a book. It's called Hyperchange, A Scheme of Consciousness. It is almost done. I'm waiting to like format it and publish it on Amazon. Just, you know, going through some last minute logistical steps should be available next week or so. I will make another video when that comes out. But that's the reason I didn't get to put out videos. The good news is this is done. We are back to full steam ahead with epic content. I just have so much in the works. I'm stoked, but sorry for not putting out videos. You know, for a week in January, I was just going all in on this and had to finish. So so that is what it is. Beyond that, did a Moonshot Monday video on Project Starlink, which is SpaceX's vision for a satellite-based internet that's eventually gonna connect the Earth and Mars. This is an unbelievable scheme. The biggest unlock I had here is that SpaceX actually plans to fund a city on Mars, not with launching rockets and that business, but according to leaked financial projections, they think that this Project Starlink internet business is gonna be multiples bigger and what actually funds going to Mars. So make sure to check that episode out for more also, put out an episode about a major Model S and X refresh that I think is coming in 2018. This was based on some info that I've seen all around the internet on Electrek with you know Tesla under-reporting Model 3 specs, having different processors in the Model S and X than in the Model 3 with the touchscreen. Just a bunch of little reasons. I was listening to the Tesla Show podcast, which I'm gonna link to, you guys gotta check out, and it just all clicked for me. It's a no-brainer. Tesla has a major Model S and X refresh in the works. They're waiting to ramp Model 3 production before announcing it, but I would totally hold off buying a Model S or X until they announce this because I think you're going to get screwed otherwise. Anyway, I put out another video that's talking about why I sold basically all of my Bitcoin and all of my Bitcoin cash. The only crypto assets I hold are Ethereum and one stable coin built on top of Ethereum. The reasoning behind this is just sort of mostly I wanted to fund Hyperchange with more money, but also I'm just a lot more bullish on Ethereum. They made a lot more progress scaling. Also, I had a big unlock, which is I think that they are going to have a much bigger addressable market in the long term, given, you know, Ethereum's not a bet on Ethereum itself. It's a bet on what's going to be built on top of it. And I just think that is multi trillion dollar potential. It's only worth about half a Bitcoin, yet running four to five times the amount of daily transactions. So you can check that video out for more info. The next video I put out is on Cheddar, which is this new financial business news startup, which I've appeared on four or five times, getting interviewed about Tesla, Snapchat, Amazon from the stock exchange. I love Cheddar. I hope they invite me on to go more. I think they are an unbelievable startup. They're only two years old, but they did 11 million in revenue in 2017. They're about to launch a CNN competitor for real news, along with their business news channel. I think these guys are clearly on the path to billion dollar valuation plus one of the most disruptive companies in this new era of digital media You guys should totally check them out if you haven't already another video I put out This is probably one of the my favorite videos that I made on hyperchange hasn't gotten that much love It's called Netflix in 2028 basically my vision for what Netflix's business model financials and valuation will look like in 10 years The gist of it is I think their streaming business is gonna be a behemoth 600 million members plus 
$100 billion in revenue in the next decade. But beyond that, they're going to do toys, merch, video game licensing, kind of what we've seen Disney do with its own IP. Beyond that, they're going to launch roller coasters, theme parks, experiences, sort of like their own version of Disney World. The backbone of this entire thesis of Netflix is their investments in original content, which give them the IP around these characters in fictional worlds that they can leverage and monetize in so many different ways. I think I'm gonna make more and more videos like that. Definitely gonna do one on Tesla in 2028. So stay tuned. Put out a video on CryptoKeys as well, which is the most popular blockchain game built on the Ethereum platform. It was pretty fun. You basically, sort of like Neopets, you can buy a little kitty and breed him. And you know, it cost me like 50 bucks to get two kitties between the gas used on the network and buying the kitties. Pretty expensive. Don't think I'm gonna be buying any more kitties anytime soon, but a really fascinating way to educate yourself and really force yourself to interact with the Ethereum blockchain. If you wanna learn more about crypto assets and Ethereum in particular, I cannot recommend trying crypto kitties enough. And if you wanna check out my kitties, I'll put a link to that in the description too. Comment of the week was from N2 on my crypto kitties video he goes next video how i sold my crypto kitty to fund hyperchange thought that was hilarious and then the fifth yard decides to comment guys i've decided to sell hyperchange i think crypto kitty is going to be bigger than tesla i was just dying of laughter when i read these those are the comments of the week if you guys leave comments i'll throw in the next tldr and you could potentially be on the comment of the week Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. If you made it this far in the episode and you haven't subscribed already, hit subscribe. Why not? We got so much more epic stuff in the works. The book is coming out in a week or two. I cannot wait to share you guys more info on this. This is Hyperchange. You're watching TLDR, your weekly recap for good news in the tech and finance space. Have an epic weekend, Hyperchangers. I'll see you guys next time.